Hello and welcome back to the basement studio. This is K2 Productions. My name is Carson as always. Uh, we are down here for a little bit of a different reason right now. Uh, sorry about the noise. My printer is going right now as this is recorded after the fact of me fixing it. But I had a little mishap recently and uh, so we're going to try and fix it today. It's been kind of delaying all my projects lately with my printer being down. As you can see, I do have something printing back there now. <laughs> but let's get right into it. I'm going to show you guys what happened. So I'm going to give you guys a little bit of a B-roll right now. You can see this is uh, one of my pieces, if I can get it to focus on it. Hey, right here. This is a massive chunk of filament that just kind of melted all around my hot end. So, I was just printing along, and I'm not really sure what happened, but uh, it uh, got clogged and started coming out of up here. It started coming out of up here, kind of. So... I had all this filament everywhere. I had all this crap that I was trying to get off. Um, and during this uh, fiasco of trying to get it back all together, I uh, pulled this. This is the thermistor. This is what tells your printer what uh, temperature it is. And it's supposed to be looped together like this. And it's supposed to be right here. My big fat fingers are in the way. But... Uh, while I was trying to pull. Sorry, I have to cut to this angle now. Um, for some reason, I lost some of the footage that was going on in there. I don't know where it went. Anyways, while I was trying to pull everything apart, uh, the thermistor got stuck in the little hole and it's a tiny little glass bead with tiny little cords and uh, it just kind of, you know, ripped apart. Everything had been covered in molten PLA filament and stuff like that. So it was really you know messed up and weird and all that stuff so right away I saw that I ripped it and I ordered some of these off of Amazon this is a pack of like eight or six or something like that thermistors off of Amazon they're like eleven dollars for them or something like that I'll try and remember to put a link down in the description and then I watched a couple YouTube videos and hopefully amassed the knowledge to give myself the confidence to try and fix this so we're gonna see how complicated it is to try and put this together I'm uh, not super good with electronics or anything, so I'm going to do a pretty simple job. I'm just going to cut them and splice them together by twisting them. Uh, the, in the videos, it said that the wires are, there's no anode or cathode or positive or negative, however you'd like to call it. So hopefully that is correct. And when I start up my printer, I mean, technically I already know because it's running, but you know, it's increased dramatic effect. Hopefully that's correct and my printer doesn't explode or overheat or, you know, short circuit or anything like that because that would be horrible. So, let's get right into it. Uh, I'm sorry about the filming quality here. It's kind of hard to uh, show what's going on in here. And we're going to have to snip this zip tie so that we can get into our wires here. Once that zip tie is free, we can kind of... Pull back our wire shroud here, and I will try and get as best of B-roll as I can. So here's what's going on right here. So I just pulled this wire shroud back, and you can see, all you have to do is follow this one right here. And I'll try and give you a little bit of a tour of the hot end. So this is the heat sink obviously the Bowden tube up here this is a I have upgraded ones from uh from Capricorn the little coupling thing that's right that's right here and then so this wire right here sorry it's all kinds of weird focuses there's so many different depths this wire right here goes to the actual heat uh whatever the heck it's called the heating element or whatever um, these two big red wires, it's a little tube, it's a little like cylinder kind of thing. You can see it just a little bit in there that it goes through this and that's what heats up so much. So, so the screw that we are interested in is this one right here, this Phillips head. 
this is what we are pulling out uh, and that is what the thermistor is wrapped around and then comes up this way. So I have it in there at the moment because I don't need to pull it out. They have some, uh, some of this, whatever it's called, that heat tape. Um, so I'm just going to cut these wires kind of up here, make sure it's these two wires, these real thin gray colored ones. I'm going to cut them up here so that I just have plenty of space to splice them together. And then we're going to see if we can just slip this guy out of here. If we can't, it's okay. And now what we're going to do is take one of my new pieces, unravel one of these guys wherever the heck it is. And so these uh, replacement pieces, they do have the little white plug uh, that would go into some of the other Creality's, I'm pretty sure. This one w does not work because this thing goes into a huge clump that screws into the back of the control panel. So it doesn't exactly work perfect. Like, you know, it, that, it doesn't work for our situation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and feed this through here if I can. Get it kind of in the right lengthish area. Probably give it a little bit of extra. So this has to come up. It's going to go around the screw that's in there right now. And the, this, sorry, I guess I should have explained this part. Uh, how this works, there's this uh, tiny little glass bulb right here. This guy is going to go into a small hole in the uh, heating element down there, that silver part. And then there's a screw, that screw that's on it is going to go in, in this hole right here. So this little glass bulb is going to fold around the corner and the screw is going to go in this hole and just barely keep the uh, thermistor in that hole. Just like, you know, very lightly secure it. It's not really gonna do too much. It just uh, is barely gonna kinda hold it in there. So, we just need to make sure that we have enough space down here. It looks like it's gonna be okay. And then we're gonna give ourselves just a little bit of extra room in case uh you know something goes wrong we'll snip the end off of that and like i mentioned before the somewhat sketchy-ish video that i watched said that there are no positive or negative ends so now what i'm gonna do is just snip off the uh shielding i don't have um What's it called? Tools. So, there we go. There it's coming. There is one. We got the open wire of one of them. Here's the next one. There, that one went a lot easier. And then we'll do the same with the wires that are connected to the... Uh, the printer. Again, sorry about the lighting, guys. Uh, I'm in my basement. Um, I don't really have... And, and honestly, the camera angles and everything. I, I don't really have, like, a perfect setup for uh, filming things like this. So, I apologize for that. But hopefully uh, I can get my point across and maybe you guys can learn a little bit or at least see that this maybe isn't so intimidating. Um, I'm definitely not a pro at splicing wires. I barely even know anything about it. So I am just going to, I'm probably not going to do it the way you guys would like me to or some of you would prefer me to. But I, So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of splay these wires out a little bit 
and then just twist them together. That's what they did in the video that I saw, and uh, that's how it's going to be. Now, we're going to twist these guys up again. Now, where did I put my... Okay, so, got my electrical tape, and we're just going to try and wrap this up as best as we can. Um, it's not going to look pretty. I am not a professional at this. I just need it to work and to go back into the uh, nice tubing cover that, you know, that Creality supplies us. We're just going to tape the heck out of this guy. Get back the other way. Hopefully uh, that video is correct and they do not have any positives or negatives. Okay, so now we'll tuck these back into the cord shielding. Hopefully it fits. Kind of like a, uh, the heck is the word? Uh, Chinese finger trap, the way the shrouding is. Okay, that's not perfect, uh, but it's better than it was. Okay, so, okay, and I, again, I'm sorry about the, the recording quality. This is quite the challenge to kind of show you guys. So, what we're looking at right here is this these little wires right here. So, there's this tiny little loop and the ball right here. So, we have my our screwdriver. We're going to pull this screw out. It dropped and if you can see if you can look closely there is there are two holes it's having a horrible time focusing but there's a big hole above and then a tiny hole right below it the tiny hole is where the little glass bead goes and the big hole is where the screwdriver goes so I'm gonna bend this guy up to where it is supposed to be we're gonna Bend these wires a little bit so that the bead is going where it needs to. Sorry, you guys probably can't see anything. If you can get the screw in the hole and just start it just a little bit, then you can kind of work stuff a little bit there. So, screw is in the hole, bead is in the hole, and then you can wrap the wires around the screw and then you're just going to slowly screw in just very gently because you do like you are not going to screw this screw down very tightly at all it's basically just to make sure that the glass bead and the wires stay put so if you guys can see right here we have where's my little screwdriver pointy we have screw, glass bead is in this little hole right here. And then the wires went around, so they loop right here. Glass bead is in the middle of the two wires, goes in that hole, and they loop around this screw. And then you just barely tighten it down so that nothing is moving. And then the shroud here goes over like this. Oh, we almost forgot our little rubber guy. Rubber guy goes back on, only goes one way, at least nicely. It's pretty simple. Honestly, you don't even really need it. I replaced the nozzle as well while I was doing this just because everything blew up, so why not? And then get these guys back on. And then we have our two screws are two uh, allen key screws that go on the on the top left corner of our fan shroud i usually try and gently put them on top of the allen key and then hold it in place and uh very slowly try and put the screw in the hole then once you can get it, start threading, then you're home free. Okay, now we're free to clear up all this crap, so that's what I'm going to do. And then uh, we're going to test it out, make sure it's working.
Hey guys, so I have my printer preparing to print something. I just used the tune to like set it so that it could, you know, heat up while the bed is also heating up. And it's moving up so far normally. Um, we're gonna see what happens when it gets to the right temperature and then when my bed heats up, then when it actually tells it what temperature I want it to print at. Um, but yeah, so far it's going well, so we're gonna check back in a couple of minutes. Okay guys, so it did get up to 200 um, and everything is printing so far. I got a first layer coming out. It's super thin right now because I replaced stuff up there. So, uh, but it is coming out uh, you know, like like normal, as normal as I can say. You know, like it's coming out like normalish. So, I don't think there's anything wrong with the uh, thermistor. Um, if you're really curious, this is a little bit of a sneak peek of what's printing next. Uh, I hinted at it, well, I straight up said in some of my other videos about my clone armor, uh, I'm going to be printing the new Galactic Armory ab pieces. So that's what's coming out on here. That's what I was trying to print when my printer exploded. So that's what's kind of delayed this a little bit. But um, we're going to get these guys going. All right, guys, that is all for today. Uh, we got it working in theory. So I'm going to keep an eye on it and make sure everything's going good. Hopefully it doesn't explode or anything like that. But other than that, Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, hopefully you guys learned a little bit off of this video and you guys can maybe start to learn how to figure out working on your printer a little bit. I've had to work on this more than enough times. It's pretty annoying, but it is the nature of 3D printing and it's you know something that you built. It's a pretty simple machine. So you kind of got to figure out how to service it and stuff. But other than that, if you're interested in any other 3D printing stuff, I do a lot of Star Wars stuff and Harry Potter, and I just like to make things in general, outside of 3D printing even. So definitely, if you're interested in anything like that or you like what you saw today, uh, click that subscribe button and stick around. If you're interested in more how-to videos and stuff like that for working on printers, let me know in the comments. I can try and make some more things as stuff comes up or just explain some things with you guys. I know there's somebody who's waiting for me to talk about how I actually go about preparing my helmets to print. So I'm going to be working on that soon. Thanks for requesting that video. I'm excited to make it for you. And I hope that it helps lots of others who are going to be ending up on this channel. But other than that, guys, thank you guys so much for watching. Have a good day. Get out and make something.